What is up my people? Welcome back to the channel for another album review. I'm your boy Nassim the Dream. If you're new to the channel, just go right on ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell as well to always keep notified of my newest content. And today I will be revealing the new Bad Bunny record, Un Verano Sin Ti. This is the newest album from Puerto Rican Latin Trap Reggaeton award winning superstar, Bad Bunny. Following this record, we were given three full length LPs dropped in the same year of 2020, starting off with the album El Ultimo Tour del Mundo. Then before this, we got Las Que at Ibra Asa. Salir, and then right after this, YHLQMDLG. Each of these records go along with conventional Latin trap reggaeton projects, all consisting of bops from Bad Bunny. However, I do feel like being this prolific kind of shows that there's like this display of urgency of developing content with not much time to rethink the dilemma and artistic standpoint when producing these projects. Before this newest project, if you've been keeping up with Bad Bunny off of the music ground, we've really been seeing him setting himself in some new professions, starting off with being on the W. WWE roster, and even in acting in certain roles. In my personal opinion, when I'm about to state this, there is indeed this incredible roar that surrounds and encompasses Bad Bunny's name, all resulting in sold out arena performances and festivals, making him Latin music's most popular artist in the entire world. Is it mostly hype? Eh. Kinda. Out of shadow of the doubt, the dude brings in authentic style, but in terms of longevity, I don't really see what everybody else sees in Bad Bunny. Even though I'm not gonna rank him as this like utopian Latin rock star, I still like Bad Bunny. With this brand new LP, we see Bad Bunny showing a new side of him, presenting in many influences of many genres and moods, such as pop, rock, electronic, older forms of Latin styles, and of course, still incorporating that Latin trap and reggaeton that he's best known for. Charming in into the mood swings, we got some romance, we got some party vibes, we got gangster rap, and down in the dubs riding on here too. Also to mention, from the first glimpse before going into this project, this album isn't exactly appetizing based off the look of it, based off its incredibly lengthy runtime going at about an hour and 21 minutes at 23 tracks. Now I think for a lot of fans, this can be looked at as a great thing, seeing how much content you're really getting from that artist. But for me, no matter who the artist is, when I see this much length time, I automatically think either this is going to be a very long time of a great time or a very long time of me wanting to smash my face in. But diving into the first tracks into this record, I'm most fond of the start with Me Porto Bonito featuring Latin reggaeton singer Chencho Colion, whom I actually like a lot on the song. This is definitely one of the better tracks that the record has to offer. Darad has some great moments on here too, giving this record some more highlights. This track also features Jacob Cortez. This track features that same style blueprint that we're most familiar with when it comes to reggaeton music, but I feel like it works to the two's benefit so well because they both really display their strengths together on this song. La Corriente has a banging vibe to it. It's absolutely booming through these stereos. Tony Dice just brings a great attribution to the song. It is muy fuego. Then on the track Party, it's pretty much speaks for itself. It's pretty much just a house party that I get on dance pop banger. The dance pop influences are mostly seen under the chorus. The vocal chops are glowing of dance pop and I honestly love them and just how they really just bring in a certain vibe into the song. With the track also displaying a decent contribution from Raul Alejandro. I also found Ojitos Lindos to have one of the richest instrumentals in the track list as well. Really loving the horn sections onto the song. The melodies are very delicate. Bomba Estereo has a great performance on the song as well. Another major highlight for me comes from a feature from Latin indie rock group The Marias that are featured on the song Otra Ata Tercer. I'm really liking the guitar plucks on this song. I'm also really enjoying the vocal chemistry between Bad Bunny and Maria Zardoya. Artist Busca Boya is another feature on the track list that I really felt like brought so much significance to this album on the song Andrea. So if it isn't obvious enough, I really was impressed with the majority of the features on here. They, I feel like all of them really brought some standout performances and really add a lot of the contributions to this album. So now that I stated my favorite favorites out of the way, let me acknowledge the parts in this LP that stuck to me that I didn't like. The intro track Moscow Mule transitions to a droney dream state of mind on the last half with some bloated reverb that ends up just really ruining the mix for me. The entire thing really just feels like it's just drowning out and I really feel like the transition into this passage in this moment just was just not great. It wasn't smooth. It wasn't cutting edge. It just wasn't great at all. I did not like it. The Suez de la Playa plays out an interesting switch of falling into more traditional Latin music, turning into more bachata influences with bright horns, shakers, and fast paced beats. You even have some like vintage classic Latin band moments where the vocalist speaks into the mic during acapella. Altogether, it does sound nice, but I'm not really sure how I'm feeling about Bad Bunny on this song. Embracing the culture is really dope and something that I could really appreciate 
from Bad Bunny, but this sound just doesn't really sound fitting to Bad Bunny, at least to me. Titi Mi Pregunto is just a flat out mess of non-consistency and just lacking so hard in this particular area. This beat is just freaking out way too hard and way too many moments. There's just moments in the song I really feel like Bad Bunny adds a decent melodic passage on the song, but everything else totally bombs. There's also like this weird inclusion of like this kind of 50s Latin country club vibe on the song Yo No Soy Celoso. This does show me that Bad Buddy really has a wide range of influences and maybe into his music listening taste processing into this LP, but yeah, I don't really know how to feel about some of it. At least in terms of making your own kind of music in that influence, I'm not really sure if it all really fits Bad Bunny at this point. Nervertia now played out with some dance and trap elements onto the LP, swapping back and forth. That just sounds like more like of a, a track they would hear a DJ play at a local bar that he made himself, which I'm not hating at all. Get your money, bro. Respect. But what I'm leaning towards with this metaphor is that it's just not appealing or it's just not eyebrow raising in a very impressive way. Some of the slower tracks like Aguacero just really fail to show me any more benefactors to Bad Bunny's versatility and music that just ultimately just fails at a lot of moments on these songs. Continuing on the track to track, Bad Bunny really just switches it up a lot. Like every time is totally something different. But I think the thing that isn't great about that is how uncohesive it feels. Granted, I think I'd rather have this than you producing the same exact sound over and over again, because at that point, you're really just including a mind-numbing effect to a record that is way too long already. Up with this, next with the song El Apagón, it features another EDM style chorus with sharp biting bass, which I do like a lot on this point. But again, these passages are not blending in with each other at all. It almost feels like I'm falling into a certain different dimension from one song to another, but it's still the same song, but it's just like, I'm kind of getting a headache at this point. It's ultimately a mixed bag, but not just in variety of the genre, more so in terms of good and bad songs. I guarantee you that every time you pick something out of this bag, you either get to get a good track, a mid track, or a bad track. All the time, it's gonna be something different every time you pick something out of the bag. Picking out some of the songwriting, like I just said, the transitioning is just not exciting. It doesn't really sound like there was too much thought put into it, switched up and sliced, not really put together in any points. This entire record lacks a immense amount of cohesion, no formula to it. It's hard to even look at this LP when really it sounds like a compilation just due to how random the placements are. <sighs> okay, look, I think what Bad Bunny has done with this newest project can be really appreciated in the long run. Making a lengthy album like this, I think will go more appreciated for your fan service. Just because it's really just been so long that he's really come out with anything, it's probably something that they would have really wanted and I think that's something that they would have really appreciated. But then on top of that, he does a another benefactor of making a huge wide selection of variants and variants of genre selections. Another thing that I think is a really smart move just because you can expand the amount of listeners that you can grasp towards your newest record, old and new. And I think that is such a great thing taking a risk like this, but for me, this album was just way too long, way too disjointed, way too similar in writing material. And I honestly just can't say I love my experience. I'm gonna give Bad Bunny's Un Verano Sin Ti a 54%. As always guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoy, go on and like, share, and comment down below. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, down in the description you'll see all my separate checklist ratings for the album, more videos, and also the links to my social media accounts so you can keep with me on the daily. And I'm gonna catch you in the next one.